All right, so this is a quick little instructional on how to put your LED lights onto your pirate's head here. So first thing you're gonna do is grab an LED and you'll notice that one lead is longer than the other. LED is only allowed to voltage to flow in a single direction. LED means light emitting diode. A diode only lets voltage go in a single direction. So if you look at the back of these two holes here, you'll notice a little positive symbol on these two sets and a little positive symbol on these two sets. So you wanna make sure that your longer lead goes through this hole. So whenever you flip it over, it's on the right hand side now. So when you flip it over, it'll be on the left hand side. So we'll take our LEDs here and we'll just insert them like so. And then here we have our long lead going into the left hand hole whenever you insert these, you want to make sure they're flush against the board. You don't want them sticking up like this or anything like that unless you intend on laying them over. So in this case, we're going to have them flush against the board. And when we turn them over, you'll see that our long leads are on the right, on the positive, where they should be. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay this down. Make sure these are pulled up tightly. And then I'm going to add a little bit of flux. Flux is not entirely necessary, but flux is very helpful in allowing the solder to flow. And only a little bit is all you need. So just a little bit there, a little bit there. Just a little dab will do. Now when you're applying the solder, you want the solder, you want the iron to be touching what it is you're working on. And you just want to very gently dab your solder onto it and make a little cone or pyramid. So I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the iron first and then we'll clean it off just a little bit. Sometimes people use sponges and then you'll just come in right like this and you'll touch and add your solder to the lead. A little dab there. Touch this guy. Little dab there. Touch this guy. Add a little dab. And right here, add a little dab. And we'll get a close up in just a second here. All right, so make sure your iron's clean. Put it back in a safe place where it won't get burned. And now if you look real closely, you'll see that the solder is not touching from one side to the other and it has a nice little cone shape. And then we'll go back at the end and trim it with these. So I'm just gonna look at them myself just to be sure. It's hard to see off camera. Okay, they look good to me. All right, so positive and negative is important when it comes to LEDs. If they're regular lights, that doesn't matter. So this is your battery tray, and the battery tray can also be installed in either orientation. So if you install it incorrectly, then your LEDs won't work. So if you look at this board, you'll notice that there is this white box outline right here, and that outline matches the battery tray with this little box section here, or this little blocked off section here. So if you install it this way, see how it's smooth? install it this way it'll match up so you want to make sure that matches up that way your positive and negative polarities are correct on your battery tray and then when you see on this side you'll see that they pop out on this side so we'll solder these two points as well and I can't lay it down so I'm gonna to have to go ahead and trim these leads right now so get yourself a nice pair of flush cuts and you'll get right up on them and just snip them off just like that, and just like that. Now we have nice, clean solder joints. As you can see, nothing is shorting out, and your LEDs are secure. So, we'll come back here. Make sure we're installing our battery tray in the correct orientation with the block matching the outline. We'll just push that in and lay it down. There we go. Maybe a little 
big ham difficulty here. All right, so both of my posts came through. Again, just gonna add a little dab of, whoops, a little dab of flux on these points here. A little bit of flux there, a little bit of flux there. And again, flux is not necessary, but it does help the solder flow nicer. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on my tip here, just to make sure that it makes contact. I'm gonna to touch where I'm going, and then add a little dab right there, and add a little dab right here. So as you can see, with the close-up, we have nice little cones again, making sure that we have a good connection with our battery tray. Nice and clean, and we'll go ahead and trim off the excess with our flush cuts. A little bit there. I like to put my finger over it so it doesn't go shooting off in your eye. There you have it. So as you can see, our battery terminal is connected neatly. Finally, we're gonna add our switch. So next to our battery tray, you can see these leads here. They go to our switch here. This is our power switch for the LEDs. Go ahead and install that. And as you can see, it's already starting to make a little bit of contact, but it's not a good contact. See how I'm wiggling it? It's not making a good contact because it's not soldered yet. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that switch off. That way we're not getting distracted. So with the switch installed, I'm going to go ahead and lay it down, excuse me. And this is going to be a little tricky. Install our switch. And I'm just going to use my pliers here as a support because it's going to want to fall out because the battery tray is a little tall. Do you want me to hold it? Um, I think I'll just use my handle here. So there, that is not working out. We'll get it, a little technical difficulty here. Had I known I'd have these clearance issues, I probably would have installed the switch before the battery tray. All right, there we go. All right, so I just have my pliers holding the switch up into the terminals. And I'm going to go ahead and apply my flux to these exposed leads here. Just a little bit's all you need. Okay. We'll go ahead and go through and solder these leads together. You want to make sure that you don't short these out so they all have to be not touching each other. Only contact with the board and nothing else. So we'll go ahead and do one. There you go. Two. four, and five. This one could use a little more right here. There. Okay. Now our switch is attached and we have a functioning board on and off.